here we are, ready to rock, Sunset Sound, Studio 2, with the boys from Wildling. They're going to be our band for the track today. We're doing a cover song, and uh, we've been working on their album for the last two months, and coming out great. We're about halfway done or so, and we've really been having a good time making this record. I think it's going to be a good one. The guys were kind enough to participate in this track today, and we're going to show you how we built a track from the ground up. We spent about two months working together so far on their album. A lot of that time was pre-production. We spent a lot of time in their rehearsal room working on the arrangements, getting every part right, getting the tempo and the key right. And guys were really great in that they really like dug in and were just stuck in a smelly crowded rehearsal room for a, three weeks and worked on a lot of songs and got them in great shape. The great thing about spending all that pre-production time is we, we got the arrangements really tight. We were able to come in here and just bang out the songs, get great performances. It's been a tricky process making the record because they really make great demos. They're really detailed and, and half the album is, is there in the demo. But um, this time they exceeded it and the demo is pretty fantastic. And we're gonna use a lot of the stems, a lot of the pieces from the demo as part of the record that we create today. There's a programmed drum beat that we'll replace with real drums. There's a bass that's demoed that we'll replace with a bigger, badder bass sound. There's keyboards that we'll augment from the demo. We're gonna put new guitars that will be a lot more stereo and wide and expansive. So we're basically gonna take their demo and make a bigger version of it. So if you look at the demo as the black and white sketch, this will be the color finished movie. With a band especially, I really take time outside the studio to get the arrangements as tight as possible. Find out the right tempo, the right key, make sure guitar parts are working together with each player. Really hone the arrangements. So once you get into tracking, it becomes a performance and not a time to invent an arrangement. I've made plenty of records where you come in the studio, just work off the floor, the arrangements are created that day. This is somewhat of a hybrid process. In fact, it's a process that a lot of albums are, are really taking this route now because people are really making sophisticated demos at home. And some portion of those demos, it always ends up uh, as part of the album, whether it's a drum loop or a program keyboard part. Th there's always some element of that initial idea that happened at home that makes it into the final record. So this process today will end up being that hybrid where we combine the great work they did at home with adding on here in the studio. So basically what we're doing in the studio is sort of trying to bring the live band energy to that home in the box demo. So this will be a much more blown up cinematic version of what they created at home. Okay, I think we're ready. Mics are placed, guitars are plugged in. I think we're ready to go. I'm gonna run in the control room, start to get some drum sounds. If you're ready to bang, uh, we're ready to make noise. Okay, so we're ready for our drummer. We had our wonderful drum tech standing in for a while, but every drummer hits the drums a little differently. And John, our drum tech, was very sharp and he's very good at mimicking other drummers. So he'll get the sound close, but I gotta fine tune it with the real drummer for the session. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Casey from the band is in there and I'm gonna have him play a bit of the groove of the song. Okay, Casey, I think we're in business. Can you uh, just play a little bit of the groove?
Okay, so we have Casey from the band out there, and his touch is a little different. I noticed immediately our snare drum's a little hotter, so I gotta bring that down. Luckily, tone stays about the same. Everything's feeling pretty close. Uh, now that I hear, again, what the beat of the song is, I'm gonna tweak the hi-hat a little bit, because that wants to be a little brighter than what I had, because he's playing uh, eights and I want them to be real defined. So I'm gonna make sure there's enough top end clarity on the hi-hat. And we may even switch out the hi-hats themselves for a brighter pair. This is a nice warm sounding set, but might want a little bit more cut to it. And we have some tom overdubs to do, so I'm gonna really quickly get some tom sounds as well. Hey Casey, you sounded pretty good. John did a good job of uh, coming close to your touch. Can you hit some toms for me? Because that's the one thing I haven't dialed in yet. Sure. Might be just uh... Yeah, just single hits are great. Okay, so I'm going to just uh, put a little bit more attack on the toms. Get them a little punchier. I always like to push the preamp gain on the toms just to get them a bit more aggressive. That's great. So, floor. Okay, we're gonna check the floor tom. Great. Okay, pretty cool. Okay, I'm checking the phase again on things. Just hit the, uh, go back and forth between the two toms. Great. That's great, Casey. Okay, so as I mentioned before, we're trying to get close to a drum loop that the band came up with at home. So I'm going for a little crunchy kind of room sound. So I'm gonna dial in a couple of compressors and distortion devices on the drums to try to match up to that sound. So give me a bit more of the beat, would you, Casey? Sure. So this is our lo-fi mic. This is our lo-fi mic that's underneath the bass drum that I use to get a little distortion and crunch the things. And that goes through a Levelor compressor. That's basically a big distortion device. And then all our drums, the whole submix of drums, go through a mono compressor that gets mixed in a little bit with the kit. And of late, I've been using the Kush tweaker. So I'm gonna solo that for you. So this is the tweaker that's a drum crush on the overall kit. drummer for about 10 minutes changing hi-hats. Uh, I tend to be very particular about really getting clarity of the eighths or sixteenths, whatever the drum, drummer's playing, because that really drives the song. That's a lot of the energy. So we just went through three different pairs of hi-hats. First pair he had was a 15-inch uh, set of Istanbul's that were very sweet sounding, and the nice thing is, is they were very quiet. Casey tends to hit his hi-hat a little bit loud, and that was kind of cool. But 
the note uh, was a little low in pitch, a little dark sounding, and not energetic enough for the song. We tried a second pair of hi-hats that were 14s, and they were nice and bright. The note was really good and clear, but they had a little mid-rangey, clanky note to them. So we actually went to a third pair of hi-hats that's back to a 15-inch set that's a little brighter and clearer, and this seems to be the best compromise. And often this will change when I put all the music together. We may actually find out we have too much hi-hat, but um, uh, I'm very, very particular about getting that clear and detailed. So Casey, can you play a little bit more of the beat with the new hi-hats? That sounded pretty great. Can I hear the 16th? I think that's going to be great. That's a good choice. Sweet. Great. Thank you. So we're going to get a bass sound now. We have Justin out there. What I'm doing with Justin is always three sources, a direct, an amp, and then I put a room mic out to capture a little bit more of the growl from the cabinet. So we'll go through those three sources right now. So if you play a little bit of the part for me. So there's my DI, sounds pretty healthy. I'm gonna just brighten it up a crack. And I'm going through a DBX compressor here that I'm gonna make sure isn't getting too squished. Okay, great, keep playing. And now here's my amp. Okay, so I'm gonna go out and adjust Justin's pedals. I'm gonna adjust his amp a little bit to get a little bit more growl, a little bit more aggression from the amp. And we're gonna just put a little Poltec on the bass bus to get a little extra low end and then part of the sound is really going to be the distortion box that Justin chooses so we're going to go out and sit with him adjust his bass amp and get the right distortion on the, on the bass because the song is really all about the character of the bass sound the parts are very simple uh, and it's just got to be getting the right growl from the bass. Okay, so I'm going to go out there now. Okay, so part of the sound of this track is really going to be about Justin's bass and getting the right distortion. So we're going to try a couple of different stomp boxes. So let's try this Apocalypse. That's pretty good. Maybe too aggressive, huh? Yeah, a little bit. Hard to tell. Uh, can you just put your amp on standby for a sec? And we'll try a different one. Let's try your uh, pedal here. Okay. Uh, standby. Play the uh, other part of the line, just the simple part. Yeah. Hey, Justin, I want to just get the amp a little more aggressive. I'm just going to crank the mids and the a, a little bit, and maybe a crack more gain on the input. 
try that. Can you tell us that any better? Yeah. Yeah? Sure. Okay. Let me go in the control room now, see how it translates to the control room, and we'll maybe make a couple more adjustments. Hey, Justin. I kind of feel it's better, but um, it's maybe a little dark. Can you brighten up the um, pedal a bit? Definitely better. Maybe go a little more. I'm at full now. Okay, tell you what, let's try the other pedal. Let's try, uh, maybe even put the apocalypse pedal back in. Okay. Let's try that one more time if you don't mind. Cool. I'll run and get some more power cables and we can try that uh, Chandler. Okay, I like the energy of that. Maybe, maybe it's a little fuzzy. Try, try just turning the drive down a crack. I don't know where it's at now. It's, uh, Is it all the way down? It's like a quarter now. So try a, a tiny bit less drive. It's all the way down actually. Okay, try a tiny bit less output. Ooh, ooh, that's getting good. Split the diff maybe. Maybe. Now it's too much. Go go down on the output. Sorry about that. There you go. There you go. 